Okay, three, two, one. Hey, hi. Today, uh, we're back in the morning. Uh, I know I lost, I lost the day, how many days we are at uh, this. Uh, but we have Sam Kong. Sam Kong is the principal consultant at Beyond Infinity Consultancy. Uh, Sam essentially helps a lot. Hey, sorry about that. Can you hear me back? back? Yes, now I can hear you. Yeah, I think the line got disconnected. Yeah, everyone is online and uh, so uh, everything has been slowed down. So everyone's facing a bit of a slowdown. Uh, yeah, but uh, we will rebroadcast yeah. this content again. So uh, essentially, we are doing live just to record it and uh, great to have Sam uh, on the show, On the show, actually. Welcome, Sam. Uh, Thanks for inviting been planning Daniel. for a long time. Yeah. Wow, for quite some time already, yes. Yeah, we've been planning this for a while. Uh, originally for a non-crisis situation, but things have changed. So what yeah. have changed for you like since the uh, MCO? Well, I think uh, when MCO first started, uh, the first few things that we needed to settle is uh, our own. How did we do for business continuity? But more importantly, uh, because in a consultancy business, uh, there are many of my clients from various industries actually call me for advices. So hence, that's why uh, today is our impromptu session to do this, uh, because yeah. I would like to also share with the people in terms of the advices, 10 lessons they have actually taught uh, mm -hmm. to my clients so that you yourself at home right now during this pandemic period can actually implement it as well. Yeah, uh, Kush, uh, Kushbu is saying hi. So hi, hi, welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, yeah, she's regular every morning uh, watching our show. So thanks for watching. Uh, Yi Siang for Matt. Magic is here, uh, Lauren. Well, I hope you guys had your breakfast. Yeah. Right. Have you had your breakfast? I actually have not, actually. Well, this is my breakfast. <laughs> OK. So you were mentioning about the 10 lessons. And, and how did this 10 lesson came about? Right? Like, to give some context. All right. So these 10 lessons, uh, in terms of when planning this live stream, are all real experiences in terms of observations and also my clients who ask for me for advices. So I compiled all this and I think that, you know, this could be quite useful even for uh, SMEs, if not even for corporates as well, because I have corporate clients too. Um, so I guess nobody was very well prepared for this one. And I think yeah. during the past 10 days, it was really good lessons uh, for me as I was also going through. So hopefully today, what I share, uh, which is relevant to me, could hopefully be useful for our audience as well. Okay, so we, we should just dive into it straight away. I mean, uh, how, how do we want to do this? Like top 10 star reverse or countdown or how do you want to do this? Okay, I think, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go in sequence, all right? Because what happened okay. is uh, when I planned this one is based on different days, like day one, day two, day three. But I know today is a Monday morning and everybody, you guys are still struggling to get your coffee, right? So I'm not going to moan how bad, you know, this uh, pandemic has been causing to businesses. Oh, you got no coffee? Oh, I got, I got, <laughs> I got a mug I can share with you. I, I, I want to because I'm waiting for uh, one of the coffee shop to open because I, I get my delivery in on the day. So yeah. Zeus, so, is it? Yeah, how you know? <laughs> ah, because I know you'll be giving out Zeus coffee. Ah, I haven't get to try them though. Yeah, yeah, they are good. I, I can give you a promo. I can give you a promo code later for twenty. Okay, okay. PM later. PM later. <laughs> All right. Uh, so shall we dive into this? Because I think our audience are actually uh, quite hungry because they yeah. haven't had their breakfast, right? All right. Sure. So let's I go. think we can. Let's go into lesson number one. Lesson number one. The highlight is update, adapt, and capitalize your BCP. Mm -hmm. You know, first day after the announcement, second day everyone was going in panic. They don't know exactly what to do. Right, BCP for most of the audience here uh, is just a term used called business continuity plan. In other words, it's how to keep your business going. Yeah. So the focus of this BCP, how to update, adapt, and capitalize. The point that I want to bring in is, you know, instead of you know making your business continue, uh, instead of uh, having the operations to continue, the most important thing is how do you continue to generate revenue as a business? Everyone's asking for it right now. So. 
I think if you have been a traditional business focused in like, uh, say, food traffic, obviously COVID-19 is highly destructive, right? Yes. So at this moment, how can you capitalize your BCP? So you capitalize this current situation and focus your business at where the traffic are, which is yeah. online. So some of the so one one of the advices that I give to my clients number one, this is a very simple step that you can do. First, identify the existing channels of sales you have. It could be your on uh, it could be your offline. You know, usually you sell to a reseller, a wholesaler, and whatnot. Yeah. But explore any other channels as well. So it could be online channels. Maybe it's a social media presence, or it could be e-commerce marketplace platforms. So research those channels because you definitely will have competitors in various market, right? Definitely. I mean, so far, Daniel have no competitor, lah, right? Uh, the, so the, I, I subscribe to the category of a uh, category of one. So you you make your own category of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. I'm also in the category of one as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, right. my, what I do is always very weird. Uh, like the last. Uh, last time, last time, a lot. Uh, last time, my previous uh, businesses tend to serve government uh, and uh, GLCs. So usually, people ask, like, "Hey, why don't you promote your business?" Because I, I don't have to. Because the 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 sales cycle is like six months, nine months long. Very different stuff. Yeah. Correct. So everyone's business model is slightly different, and hence that's why it's very important to explore your sales channel. What may work for other people may not necessarily work for you. So, like Daniel just mentioned as well, his business could be at, at a very unique proposition, right? However, there are many different other channels that we can explore too. So, like I said, e-commerce platforms, you know, your own building, your own website. I think right now there's a very high search demand in terms of building websites, yes. and also social media. So, as simple as just having Facebook. I mean, uh, prior to this uh, MCU as well, uh, there there were there were there were not so frequent live streams from yeah. various groups, and suddenly everyone is doing live stream, right? Correct. Yes. So this is also building presence because you want to build continuity for businesses. Okay, and regardless of products and services, uh, studies have indicated that ninety one percent of Malaysians actually search a product or a service online, and roughly about eighty two percent of them actually purchase something online. So the question is. Is your business online? Because if the customers are all online and you're not, then you're missing the bandwagon. So unless you're in a business of not looking for clients, lah, then you know common sense tells you that you know you should be where your clients are right now, which is online. So to uh, to, yeah. to jump into perspective, uh, because uh, also uh, the the not only for businesses but individuals. So there are some uh, like uh, uh, migrant workers here that are. So, for example, a bunch of uh, Vietnamese community people who uh, do not have that day jobs now because uh, the the shops are closed and etc. So they've been actually cooking at home and posting in smaller group forums like uh, forums in Kuchai Lama or Oakland Road or whatever, asking hey, who want to do. Then they do a delivery over there. Yeah, so, and uh, I my my community around here they're also very active as well. And I got friends who are actually uh, from professional jobs. Uh, right now, they take like a part-time bakery and whatnot, and they use uh, grab deliveries for delivery as well. So, um, so I think uh, in terms of migrant workers, look, even in foreign workers, they are looking for something to actually help them to facilitate that revenue. So why not other businesses, right? So the idea here is the resources is everywhere. You know, they are all waiting for you, and all you need to do is just to update your BCP, if not adapt and capitalize. But whatever you do, the most important thing is. Life matters, so I'll cover this in lesson number nine later on. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you stay tuned for that lesson number nine. Uh, stay tuned for that. I purposely pulled it all the way down to number nine. Huh? <laughs> so number ten must be something more in interesting actually in terms of that. Uh well, I would say it's something more humane, but uh, we'll review it later. Yeah. So, so I think that's more about lesson number one. All right. So remember, update, adapt, and capitalize your BCP. All right. It's not just all about uh, you know operations, but also where your revenue streams are. So I guess yes. businesses can write on that. Mm. So then, lesson two. Wow. Lesson number two. Now we're going like choo choo train. Actually, right. you know what? I can do it even better. But yeah, just proceed first. Okay. Sure. So lesson number two. Explore digital tools to manage your team. So I remember uh, after the announcement in day two. Right before the MCO, just the day before MCO, everyone was scrambling, communicating. Uh, I guess many of us also went through that phase period. Um, and I think most importantly is, uh, you know, you only need like a laptop. If you don't have a laptop, you have a mobile phone. Worst case scenario, you don't have a mobile phone. 
you have a desktop. I mean, we are speaking in general, okay, yeah. for SMEs and corporates. And those are, the, those are the things easily available for you to continue to function, to have your meetings, to organize, right? Uh, and I guess uh, over the first, uh, first three days, I saw that many people were sharing, you know, productivity apps, Zoom, the most, most used uh, yeah. video conferencing app for everyone, right? Uh, and I saw and I saw StreamYard from you uh, because uh, you were using this for all your live streams. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So these are all 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 productivity apps that could actually help you to organize your team. So even if you're unfamiliar, you know, of the tools, I don't know, as simple as um, so. Say for example, in the office, you may have. Oh, oops. Sorry. Right. There no. was a call that came. So no. so say for example that um, you have a. Uh, you, you, you have a software licensing for Microsoft Words uh, in your office, all right? But your staff may not have those licenses at home or they don't have access to this. That's fine. You can use, you know, Google Docs, Google Sheets. They're equivalent to all the, the, the softwares they're using in, in, in your workspace, yeah. you know? So these are also solutions. If you don't know any solution, ask. I'm sure in the community, plenty of people would actually help you and it doesn't cost you anything, only a question, right? So... I think uh, uh, there were also some groups that I observed and there were some of my clients who also asked me, hey, Sam, do you think using this one is good for me? A project management app, you know, I'm, I, I never used Slack before, you know, I, right now I think I want to implement Slack because I want to track all the people that are working, whether they are working on a project. So I gave them a simple formula. It's called the KISS formula. Yep. Okay. okay. So the KISS formula is it's called, keep, it's called keep it simple, stupid. Not to ask you to kiss them, but it's called keep it simple, stupid. All right. The key idea is to make sure. Social distancing. So we cannot... Sorry. Social distancing. We cannot uh, kiss them. Yeah, we cannot lie, but we can give a flying kiss. Lie. It's okay. Lie. <laughs> yeah. But keep it simple, stupid model looks into simplifying things. All right. Not unless you're building a rocket mm -hmm. science. Nothing is that complicated. All right. So your existing mm -hmm. operations, keep it simple. Communication, keep it simple. Straight to the point. No need to really look into all those uh, new apps if your team is not prepared for it, right? At the surface, keep your business going. Yeah. So I think we are going to lesson number three then now. All right, we are going to lesson number three. How is the audience going so far? I can't, I can't really see them. Uh, uh, there's only one comment so far. Uh, greetings from KL. Uh, that's uh, Suzanne, Jess. Uh, I oh, cannot... hi, hi, hi. Yeah, because uh, the problem now is uh, I cannot. That's why I can only see the name over here, but I cannot see who say cliff hang, cliff hanging us until number nine. So I, I so I'm sorry. That one is I, uh, yeah. Someone... <laughs> oh, cliff hanging us until number nine. Wow. Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, you survive until number nine. Don't worry. Okay. Lesson number three. <clears throat> we look into your resources. Uh, I think uh, primarily is uh, how can you identify your existing resources, which is your team, all right? Uh, have a clear look. Uh, have a really clear look to take the time. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I think the internet hang for a while. No worries. Just go ahead. I can still hear you. Ah, okay. So have a clear look at where the fats are and make your business lean. Um, because during this MCO happened, right? Now, all of a sudden, uh, you start to see, eh, after MCO, eh, suddenly, like, I got so much time, you know? So all these yeah. are wastages. So last time, you may have uh, teams who need to travel to meet your clients. And, you know, in Malaysia, typical, you have to go through one hour jam, if not one hour in and one hour out, you know? Yes. So that's two hours. Now, all of a sudden, after after MCO, uh, you do not require that, 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 that kind of travel. And if, let's just say, every day you have one client to meet a day, now you just save two hours in a day's work. So how mm -hmm. can you reallocate the two hours? All right. So to some of the so some some of the SMEs, if you have a HR department or if you are the person who hire your own candidates, I think this is a good time to relook into their CVs, right? Identify uh, who are the people who are adaptable or have the skill to be agile, right? Yeah. Keep them. So then they are the ones who will drive your business and they keep your business to be relevant. Now remember mm -hmm. about the productivity tools that we talk about in lesson yeah. number two. Yes. So essentially, these are the people who can continue to educate your team how to use these tools and also suggest you 
how to use all these tools to keep your business uh, going. Mm-hmm. So cherish them and I guess just keep an humble mind. So one of the one of the examples that I can draw in lesson number three is uh, I think right now a lot of businesses are investing into video conferencing like Zoom, for example. And the question is, can businesses later on adopt all these tools to be part of their usual practice? So say you like to meet clients on a day-to-day basis, okay, but the traveling is killing you. So after this MCO period, since now, you know, video conferencing still get meetings done, you still get things done. Uh, mm-hmm. Can you actually in- incorporate this into your SOP or in your business operations? And then maybe the pocket of free times that you have for your staff could be utilized for something else. Um, another example is also, uh, I think this is much more relevant to financial institutions. So I take uh, banks as an example. So I guess during this period, uh, a lot of banks are also actually having a lot of approvals. So standardized things like documents, POs, invoices, sometimes you need you know manual sign and whatnot. And I guess uh, right now during this period, because management uh, may not be in office, everyone is working from home. So everyone is figuring out, you know, how to do these online approvals. And there are online approval uh, softwares uh, whereby they're mm-hmm. secure, right? So, you know, for, for the banking industry, you know, for financial, important documents, can they be actually uh, invest into uh, this kind of softwares? <clears throat> A digital signature and like also change the processes basically in the yeah plan. correct 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 so even like for this uh for this uh banks institutions right uh i think one thing uh, other than bcp which is business continuation plan they can look into business transformation plan all right uh either you are an sme or maybe you are a bigger business uh find time to look into your capital expenditure your capex right things that you need to invest this year anyway so maybe you might be looking into investing to renovate your office or maybe putting a new furniture. But this year is going to might be a long ride. So there might be things that you want to look into or relook into. So redirect your investment. You know, what could have been immediate today, you know, could not be immediate tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So I think during these 28 days, I'm pretty sure many industries are looking into reinvesting their KPEX. So it could be like an online approval system. It could be like video conferencing because all this helps you in productivity. And this year is going to be a long ride. It might be a long ride for some. Yeah, I think uh, the one of the, I cannot remember which minister, but they said uh, in terms of, uh, uh, someone recently said that a recovery could be about six months in terms of that. And uh, some are estimating over a year. So it's definitely going to be a long ride for all of us. Yes, definitely. So not just corporates, uh, SMEs as well. And I think right now, many people are quite concerned. Uh, but however, should you have that, that CAPEX expenditure for this year, you know, relook into it and see which are much more suitable to invest. Something that, you know, can bring you a better ROI or something that doesn't, you know. Right now, the, the stream is, is, uh, is hanging but still recording, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I can still hear you. It should be fine. I'm actually monitoring the stream, so we should be fine. Don't worry, I'll just proceed. Uh, okay, good. <clears throat> so shall we proceed to lesson number four? We are at lesson number four. Okay, we are at lesson number four. Daniel, at this point of time, do you have any, any, any questions that you have regarding these three lessons? I think more importantly, if any of our audience have any lessons, uh, questions like, uh, mm. You can leave at the comment, uh, basically. If uh, leave a comment, we should be able to see you. Uh, if you can't, uh, just tag me also. Uh, Kush say is uh, yeah. Kush say is all good and clear. So thank you very much. All good and clear. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so to all the audience out there, uh, should you have any questions regarding these 10 lessons that I'm sharing, feel free to comment, tag Daniel, you know, and then later at the end of this session, we're going to go through the Q&A session. So hopefully this will be beneficial for all of you. Today is only Monday. You have another, you know, four to six days throughout the week. Hopefully yep. you can implement some of these lessons so you find them useful. Yep. So now we go to lesson number four. Okay. Now, lesson number four is quite interesting. Uh, it's called re-establishing new routines. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, for the first time, everyone in your company, right, suddenly everyone works from home. Yes. So on normal days, 
you might have breakfast together, makan lunch together, lepak together. Now with MCO, you cannot lepak together, lah, right? Yeah. Some of the some of the trends, I think Daniel, you also have noticed. Uh, I I realized you had this Thursday minum group, Thursday minum uh, catch up, right? Thursday catch up. Yep, we we do actually. Yeah. Uh, so I saw some of the some of the initiatives whereby you know people uh, actually they set like a Zoom meeting together or Skype meeting together. Um, they have breakfast together. Uh, they have also lunch together. They celebrate birthdays together, and some even more hardcore actually they do tabata together in the evening. Uh, those kind of workouts, you know, with their team members to get everyone going. Um, I think. Uh, these routines could be in any forms, so long you think that is healthy and and productive for your team. Uh, but why do I say this lesson is important? Because it keeps everyone in your team focused. Yeah. Um, it keeps them on a high spirit, and that's very important because um, at this time, you know, to be in touch with your team is, uh, I would say, is quite uh, incremental to your to your business. Um, I think many people are also with their family, and so having this new routine is not to just uh, maintain, you know, relative good progress on your work, but also to become human as well. You know, imagine some some people lah, huh? they could be single, you know, and they don't have much friends, or maybe they don't have any loved ones like many of us who have families at home. Yeah. You know, to them, maybe your this new routine to have this set meeting with everyone. Is their only point of contact during this moment, you know. Uh, so I guess uh, I was going to say we we are definitely social creatures, and uh, so one of the things that is actually very important is uh, mental health, and uh, the 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 mental health also uh, it comes in con. Uh, it's basically also coming in contact with other human being. So yeah, whatever interaction. Yeah, I think you did a live stream session on mental health as well, uh, just two yes. days ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, correct. I think that was a good one, and I think uh, social is very important. Um, ultimately, you know, business is all uh, about dollar and cents. But let's not forget, uh, you know, being human. You know, so I think that's quite important uh, throughout these twenty eight days, lah. Hopefully, no extension, lah. I think uh, we can also say we can also give an example because uh, both of us are, are Alibaba alums. Uh, we we went to. I think you went for the uh, Netpreneur training, is it? Yes, oh. uh, I was in the batch one, and I think you were in the third batch, right? Yeah. Yes, I was in the third batch, and so uh, one of the things that I end up doing is uh, they all got bored, and uh, they all do handstands together and uh, take videos and send to each other what kind of handstands they do. Yeah, so, yeah. And remember that time. That time uh, that was during the SARS time, and that time they have they were using like dial up internet speed. Oh yeah, tini to tini tini the kind right? Yeah, that kind. So we are a lot more general. Hmm. Yeah. Correct. Uh. So even 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 like uh in in Alibaba they try to keep their spirits high. Uh. And I think uh through our chats as well, you know, in Dink, uh, we also see the way how they cope with the the COVID nineteen during when everyone was being at home. Yeah. And at the same time, they try to still keep their entire team up and coming. You know, and do their work, but at the same time also. You know, keep the relationship strong. Yeah. Uh, so, do we go to lesson number five then? Okay, lesson number five. Three words. Online, online, and online. Um, now I think one one thing uh, that that was that happened was that uh, I think coming to day three, day four. Yeah. Um, everyone was sharing, you know, uh, you know, can good online grocery, you know. So you you see people like uh, Happy Fresh, uh, Tesco Online, yeah. uh, My Grocer, you know. These are all the among the prominent, you know. These are friends whereby they are all in the in the prominent limelight right now. Okay, and so everyone started to search onto it, and they try to book a slot, but you know, you you can't you can't because mainly there's only this limited slot. Now what happened during this is also a lot of people are sharing. Uh, anything that was through WhatsApp, you know, and a service that they could have used, uh, a delivery that uh, is convenient. Uh, and I think recently, you know, Daniel also just shared as well uh, regarding the Cameron, uh, Cameron project uh, by Lazada as well, and yeah. other people uh, in my community here also they are very active in helping the Cameron Highlands as well. So, um, so what I want to try to emphasize is the rug yet is very accustomed to online. 
everyone is doing online shopping, Zoom calls, live stream, browsing Facebook, you know, and even uh, those who don't usually have this kind of habit, they start to do so because it's a means of survival during this period. So they will try to, you know, uh, source for, oh, where are the, where are the groceries that you think I think I can buy? What are the mini marts that are available? You know, they look for suppliers and people who usually have some form of online presence seems to get a hit. All right. So yes, you may think at this period right now, everyone is buying toilet paper. Hey, bro, I want to tell you what. Toilet paper is the number one product to be sold out throughout the world. And it's quite consistent in all countries. I think like condom is probably number two now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other, day, the other day I remember in day two, uh, I think condom uh, Durex had, a, had flash sales in online platforms as well. So I think they were following suit in terms of knowing that uh, maybe people may need it to restock during this period. However, jokes aside, uh, you know, um, many people may think that uh, at this period, you know, it's only all about buying toilet paper or buying food online uh, and only buying essentials. It doesn't work that way. You know, eventually uh, life will soon get back to normal. I mean, after this period, you know, life will slowly get back to normal. Yeah. I mean, how much toilet paper you think people can buy anyway, right? Uh, people will still want to buy, you know, books, uh, gadgets, you know, other products and services too. So if people are ready to buy, is your business ready for them to buy? If you are a fisherman, are you ready to catch the fishes, right? Yeah. They are all ready, ready, but are you ready? So why I mentioned online, online, online is because where is your business waiting for them? The customers are so used to convenience during these 28 days. All right. Yeah. So is your business ready for them after the 28 days? People will realize, hey, you know, convenience. I'll give you an example. My father used to go to a restaurant and buy lunch every day. All right. But, okay. you know, now he's not supposed to go out. So obviously, you know, sometime he would definitely have to learn, you know, food panda, grab food, deliver it, you know. Well, obviously, you won't be happy, lah, but if you want to eat, then you have to learn. Lah. And I guess, uh, you know, old habits die hard. So I guess you have to adapt now. <clears throat> Especially yeah, when you're hungry, yeah, you adapt even faster. Right? You know, so all pun intended, you know, if you're hungry for business, you got to adapt, you know. So it's like in the office, lah, if you really want to pee, you know, and it's an emergency, you run to the toilet faster. Lah. Same like business. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I've seen so many. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of people who are doing stuff like adapting to business that are, they have never tried before. Uh, so a, a very good example will be uh, one of the interviews we had with Hien Go a couple of days ago. Hien mm. Go is the partner for uh, Open Space Ventures over mm. in Singapore. The One of the companies that in is essentially a, a fashion e-commerce company. And the founders right. was like, okay, we no one wants to go and buy fashion already at this one time. Then Hien, Hien gave mm. them the idea, look, you build up a logistic chain that can go into rural area. You're no you're you're a logistic company that just happened to sell fashion. Yeah. Correct. So, so they are pivoting over that. So that is so amazing to hear. Yeah. I I think uh, there are many business models that were born out of uh, during this period. And it's not uh, mainly because of profitability, but also at the same time, it's due to survivability. And then later on, you discover that there's a new product for your business and there's new revenue streams for it. Okay, well, well let's go to number six then. No. Okay, uh, number six. Uh, number six is about re-evaluating your data. Uh, I think uh, to many entrepreneurs who are listening to this live right now, maybe some of you are online and maybe some of you are not. Um, but if you're already online, I think it's time for you to reevaluate your data. Yeah. Um, just because everyone is buying masks right now doesn't mean that they're not going to buy other things later. Um, at some point, you know, people need to buy shower gel, vitamin C, toys. Um, I think electrical goods uh, because uh, things get broken down during this period, right? Uh, I think there are many, uh, many people who are cooking at home. Uh, yeah. Daniel, do you cook at home, at Daniel? I, I do, I do. Uh, but I, the, the problem is my fridge broke down the week before this whole thing. So I have uh -huh. very the item on my fridge, so I'm just getting delivery most of the time. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, so there you go. Classic example, right? Things can get broken down. So people will still want to repurchase as well. 
and I guess uh, 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 there there have been uh, there have been a search for drills as well. Also, so home DIY uh, has been on the search as well. Also, because uh, uh, men at home right now, uh, some people were some people were thinking about uh, doing a lot of DIY stuff at home. Like for example, installing a new bidet. Or either you know putting up the furniture that they bought from IKEA three months ago, but because everyone was busy, or it could be as simple as you know it's time to upgrade the toilet seat, you know because they spend so much time on it. And and I suppose only parents could understand and relate to this, right? Yeah. Toilet is your only escape time from kids. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> uh, based on all my friends. I'm not kidding you, you know. I got friends who are telling me, "Hey, I'm messaging you right now. I'm in the toilet right now." I say, "Why are you messaging me? The toilet is so unhygiene." I say, "Oh, I'm escaping from the kids right now. My wife is taking care, and I need to take a ten minutes break for a while. Wow, it's too much for me to tahan already." <laughs> well, it, but it, yeah, it, it's definitely hard. Yeah, Sorry, but, but yeah, uh, even even just for parents to upgrade the toilet seat. I mean, jokes aside, uh, even for kids, look, they have been out of school for quite some time, you know, uh, they may be outdated toys, they, they may be quite bored already, they need new educational materials, they need books. So these are just some some examples that I think uh, all of us can relate with, okay? Uh, because during this uh, lockdown, you know, we are all pretty much occupied with what's at home. That's it. Yeah. But after this, uh, there's something to relook into. So for online, for, for the people who have online, and you know, usually they come with analytics and, you know, uh, that kind of data. We look into it and see what kind of trends will spike. Yes, and I think uh, Danny also yesterday shared with, uh, <clears throat> uh, with it was uh, Maverick. Yes, yeah, Saturday Maverick and Kenneth. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So you know, you talk about different kind, and and true enough, DIY tools and bidet was definitely search, right? Yes, search. So, like now, so now you know why uh, the most major consumers are mostly parents, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also dumbbells. Uh, I think yesterday we had a uh, 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 PTT outdoor mic chew, and uh, oh yeah, from Ipo. From Ipo, and yeah, uh, like we like he is basically a company that is supposed to do outdoor equipment for people go running and uh, hiking. No one can go outdoor, so the 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 stuff that was highly in demand are essentially all the stuff that you can do uh, workout at home. Yeah, correct. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of uh, businesses right now, those who know how to capitalize on data, they also analyze what's the data relevancy. All right, mm -hmm. so that will help them to create new products, if not invest into new products. Something that I'll cover in my next lesson as well. So, um, but just now I talk about the online people who have the online segment, right? What about businesses yeah. traditional who doesn't have the online segment or have not gone on board online? So this this would definitely help you. I think there's no better time than now to actually reconnect with your clients. We look into your customer database, all right? There may be clients that you may have lost in touch. There may be your big clients that you need to serve. And yeah. during your busy period, you hardly had the time to actually, you know, knock on their doors. So this is a time to knock on their doors, catch up with them, you know, and build their relationship. You may educate them about your existing or new products, or you can also send them, lah, I mean, like a voucher to be utilized later on. But our key idea is reconnect with your clients online. All right. So I think this is something that uh, traditional businesses can do as a first step so that they can secure their revenue in the months to come. Mm, businesses doesn't come immediately. I think it takes relationship. So this is the best time to invest in that relationship. And so uh, are we moving to question, um, lesson number seven? Okay, good. Uh, we are, our timing is quite nice, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Half an hour to our live stream sessions. And right now we are covering into lesson number seven. Um, <clears throat> I think lesson number seven uh, highlights in terms of adapting your operations. Mm -hmm. uh, I can relate this uh, because uh, F&B clients have been calling me as well. So, And I guess um, if you're already online, it's time for you to iron out the creases. All right? So focus your online operations because the search is there. Right? You're mm -hmm. offline right now, nobody's visiting. Okay? But online, there's a high search. Yeah. So everyone is going online and you can also estimate that there are more transactions going online, more fumble that's happening online. So you have to be very fast to learn your lessons and implement it quicker. If you identify there's some part where you're very sluggish, then it's yes. time to rethink and quickly re-implement new things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right now, uh, online uh, engagements are becoming more real. You are actually speaking face-to-face -face with your customers all the time. Yes. And so you get the feedback even much more faster. So if your team, you have to get them to be prepared to adapt. 
right? There are many things that they need to adapt. And I guess I want to share an offline example for this one. So Tesco, I don't know. Do you, where, do you, where do you do your shopping, Daniel? Uh, I actually do at Tesco, surprisingly or not. So I, I generally do okay. at Tesco. Uh, great, they are great. Also our partner for they are also our partner for uh the uh NGO that we just started uh, so they are the delivery the rumah kita is it yeah, rumah kita yeah oh that's great yeah <clears throat> so Tesco in particular right uh they just recently launched uh, I think about just uh, about one week ago um what they did is they realized that there were many males who were ketua rumah lah, and mm. they need to do shopping and yes. uh, when, whenever I do whenever I do grocery shopping right. Uh, I also see the same thing. So everyone was on Facebook Messenger call, WhatsApp call. Hey, darling, uh, is this the sayo that we want to buy? Uh? Right, this kangkong versus bayam, you know, and then different parts of the fish. So I constantly see this. Uh, and in fact, you know, the the, the smarter ones, uh, they will use like a video call, uh, say, for example, uh, when whenever there's line available. Um, but some of them, they will just <clears throat> WhatsApp pictures and whatnot. So Tesco came out with a clear illustration, like a huge board. I think you also seen that as well, right? Yeah. For meat, poultry, and vegetables, tell you this is a tray bayam, this is sawi pute, this is all what. So immediately, right? Uh, whenever shoppers, uh, doesn't matter men or, or lady, right? Immediately they see, they identify this is something I want to buy, I need to buy, I'll take it now. It's faster, right? And yes. because during MCO period, <clears throat> we all want to uh, reduce and want to increase social distancing, minimizing the time within the concentrated crowd. Yeah. So I think this this initiative was very good. So they were also adapting. I mean, tradition, you don't see Tesco doing this. Suddenly now, the consumer changed already. Ma. There were more meals or maybe uh, people who were not very familiar with grocery coming to grocery stores to buy. And then they realized that the time stock in there is so long. So creating this illustration actually helps. And in fact, facilitates faster transaction because people can immediately recognize, they pick and they just go. And I think just a uh, few days ago, uh, I think they also launched the scan and pay using a mobile app to scan the mobile code. It's like Amazon yeah. Go lah. You put in your basket, and you can just check out, right? <clears throat> yeah, I so think, I think is, this is, yeah. That those are like really great initiative to actually move things forward, and I, I also feel like those uh, like the pivot was very fast. I think those are things that probably they had in mind for a very long time, but it's mm -hmm. just like we have to implement now, and everything is accelerated. Correct. Uh, there are many solutions that are recently being implemented. They definitely have been in the pipeline for a very long time. Or definitely it would have been part of the plan however due to this period with the with the consumer demand coming in they have no choice but to roll it out as quickly as possible i mean it doesn't matter whether you 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 it's not a perfect plan or whatnot the question is whenever you're able to cater the crowd then you can keep improving and perfecting rather than being too perfect then roll it out then no one uses it right at this period it's just roll out and then see what happens roll out and then see what happens yeah uh, before we jump in <laughs> Next lesson, uh, lesson number uh, eight. Uh, eight. There's a. I do not know who is this, but one of your friends say I remember you uh, doing a talk during e-commerce forum last year. Wow! Out, uh, hi. We cannot find. We cannot find the name. Uh, so, <laughs> hi, if you can share your it's name. Okay. And, thanks for. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank. Thank. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. Share with your East Malaysia yeah. friends as well. Yeah. If you have any question, feel free to just drop in the comment. We can see the comment. We just cannot see the name, uh, or the name is hard to track. So feel free to do yeah. That. But we can see this during the the Facebook, right? Uh, I mean, if we log into the Facebook group, yeah, then we can okay. see lah. Yeah. But through this app, we can't see lah. No. So that is probably going to be there is a few streams. So there's watch party and what. So some comments are in the watch party. Some comments are in. The oh, I see. I see. Right. What's, it's a bit distributed. Okay. Yeah. I see. And if you would have shared it also. It will be somewhere over there, somewhere over there. So sure, so yeah, sure. it's everywhere. Okay, so uh, in to finish up lesson number seven, you know, uh, what Tesco did was actually uh, encouraging social distancing and also spending less time in the store. This is how an offline example adapt to, uh, you know, the operations that are incoming. Yeah. So I've been talking a lot about uh, online payment systems, and if those big players are on online payment system, if you don't get on this boat, you never will. I mean, I'm one of the, I mean, in no less than one month, lah, I can tell you that wet markets are definitely going to have cashless transaction. I mean, as much as right now, Touch and Go e-wallet and Boost, they're also trying to go through all this. Uh, but traders and companies, you know, if your system is not the most user-friendly and you are not catching on this wave, then this should be the time to do so. Less contact, you know, you have no better reason to go cashless. So who say business has to stop? 
I personally have a very clear idea on what company need to do to go cashless and the procedures as well. Uh, just to give you an illustration, the wet market nearby my house, which is in Tamantun as well, uh, mm -hmm. also have went through cashless and we can see that having those cashless payment actually facilitates faster transaction. So there's not a very long queue. People can go in, grab, go, pay, ciao. You know, so it's a very good process. Yeah. So they also see that uh, because uh, many months ago, I also told them uh, they should go cashless. Uh, so they already have it. So I think that's very good. Well, there's, a, there's a few comments, but we will pull from later. Let's go to number eight then. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we are in lesson number eight. You are one more step to lesson number nine. For those of you who are cliffhanging until number nine, you are almost there. Stay strong. Okay. Um, lesson number eight. Uh, I think this is also uh, very applicable to most businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. Lesson number eight highlights in terms of be practical uh, mm -hmm. by limiting your expenditure because savvy. And what does this mean is, uh, let me give you an F&B example. Uh, I think moving into day four and day five, a lot of restaurants also take note that uh, they have limited access to groceries, yeah. right? They are fresh ingredients. So what exactly they did is uh, they reinvented their menu. Uh, some even also actually uh, WhatsApp to me as well. And then I took a look into it and uh, gave them a few suggestions. Uh, but the idea is what kind of resources you have at the moment, uh, yeah. what kind of menu can you adapt to it? And by, by limiting the menu, they also keep their operational low so that they can keep the business alive. So obviously, like your standard star dish will still be there, right? However, the complimentary one that is uh, for everyone else to eat, uh, that's what keeping the business alive. So be very clear on the dollar that you're spending. Uh, I mean, stretch your dollars, right? If this is $1, you want to make sure that the investment can be utilized multiple times. Um, and maybe I can give you this example. Uh, again, like, it's an F&B example because I think this is easier for people to understand. Yes, now imagine if you are because now breakfast right soon to be lunch so everyone getting hungry so i'm trying to get your appetite going right now yeah. imagine that uh you know if i'm a restaurant okay and i serve a set meal my set meal comes with ice lemon tea so for the ice lemon tea you know i will need to buy like tea bags lemon sugar and also hire a barista to make the drink i may sell say 10 cups of uh, ice lemon tea all right, and I buy 10 cups worth of ingredients. Yes. However, at the end of the day, if I only able to sell eight, there's two wastages, all right? So that's 20% of wastage. Now, if I want to make my every dollar count and I don't want to waste food, especially during this period when resources are extremely limited, cash is tight. So for the same amount of money that I used previously and invested, I serve packet ice lemon tea. So I can store them for a longer period and I'm still able to serve the same value to my customers set with ice lemon tea and trust me customers might even feel safer because admittedly you know uh everyone's need to be a bit more distance right and everyone talking about hygiene uh however i do i do admit that this may not be uh, environmental uh, environmental friendly uh, but this is just a short-term thing now how about businesses with products so this out of fb lah. for those of you who have products uh i can share with you so uh, many months ago, when I was visiting Hong Kong, uh, and at the streets of Hong Kong, there's this very nice clock shop, all right? At the front display, right, at the glass there, you get to see those grandfather clocks, you know, those imported from Switzerland and whatnot. And it's very nice to look at, you know, and I always wonder whether got people want to buy, you know, because it's so expensive. Yes. They're in the, you know, 50 to 100,000 ringgit Malaysia. Okay, like, I, 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 it's just nice to look at. I, I like clockworks, I like mechanics. You know, um, but it's very nice. So every time when I pass, I see a lot of people were gathering there and looking at it. <clears throat> and just recently, uh, some of my Hong Kong friends also sent me the, they, they sent WhatsApp picture to me as well uh, of this same clock shop. And what they did is they removed all the, all the price item. And right now in the front display glass, which is the most important space in the retail, they are putting out masks, hand sanitizers and essential cleaning products. Right. So what this means is actually they are, they are also looking at uh, consumer data. So their offline consumer data all are looking into all these essentials. So when you put out the essential, number one, it drives traffic to your store. And number two, uh, these are the products that will help you to keep your business alive. So I think it was also highlighted in, in one of your interviews uh, with uh, Dr. Gary as well from yes. MRCA, right? Pivoting your business, right? So this is one of the examples that I observed very clearly. A Hong Kong famous clock shop 
you know, now selling masks and hand sanitizers, right? Uh, however, um, the crucial part of this lesson number eight, right, uh, being cost savvy is be very clear on the returns of your dollar spent. Make every dollar count. Yes. Hmm. Before we move into the more crucial lesson number nine, uh, sure. just a uh, hi from Justin Chong from Epo. Uh, he met you in Epo. Yeah, I, I think he's from Epo, but yeah, he's a oh. friend of Marcus. So Marcus hey, is, our, hi. is our friend. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I like to see Epo people. Yeah. So, and also that I'm thinking about Epo food. Uh, so. What's your favorite Epo food? Ah, uh, okay. Sadly, it's actually the uh, Tan Tat. Like, I really like the I really like, like the Tan Tat, the Nam Hyung. Or, there's actually two or three shops I really like in terms of that. Oh. But there's one quite far away. Uh, my uh, It's actually quite far away from Ipo Town. Like, probably, to me, it's one of the better ones. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to say that uh, at this moment right now, when you just brought up this Tan Tat, uh, you know, I'm missing Ipo food a little bit. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like she so, got, uh, she got it's like also one of my regular places basically. Oh yes, yes, yes. But I used to go there like early in the morning, like uh, at around ten o'clock when there's less crowd. And usually around ten o'clock, that's where the, the the locals usually come and eat. Rather before the tourists, the tourists usually come at twelve o'clock. Yeah. Uh, yeah so sometimes if we are lucky, you know, they prepare all the food beforehand. We get to makan first, then we continue to do work lah. Uh, Ethel De Costa actually say uh, innovate, adapt, and try. I think that is in response to your uh, lesson number eight. So yeah, Correct. yeah, that, that is something that we all believe, in, especially in this time. Correct. Uh, however, I just want to highlight the sequence. You know, innovate, adapt, and try. Um, there's no particular sequence, but however, my recommendation is number one: you have to learn how to adapt first, because mm -hmm. innovation takes a lot of time. While yep. you innovate, you first adapt first. Then your team can help you to innovate the new ideas. Then later on, will you thrive, right? Don't complicate the process of, oh, now right now we need to think of a new business model. Not necessary. Adapt your business to the current situation first. Uh, mm -hmm. Any business who survive is the first one to adapt. Yeah. That's a, that's a very good lesson. Yeah, that should be lesson number 11. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> Extra bonus case. Extra okay. bonus case. So are you guys ready for lesson number nine? Drum roll. <laughs> Okay, are you ready for lesson number nine, Daniel? I am always ready for lesson number nine. Okay, fantastic. Lesson number nine. And I think this is a very important lesson for myself and everyone else. Lesson number nine highlights about life matters. All right. Um, I think uh, many businesses are very focused into task. Um, however, as important a task is, think of it doing in a safe way. Uh, I think during the first uh, eight days of MCO, uh, including corporates as well, everyone was figuring out who is supposed to go to work and how should they go to work, what are the parking available, you know, all these kind of essentials. Yes. Um, some people say that, um, should you feel sick, straight away stay at home, self-quarantine. But there are also people who are very focused in their work and they want to come to work and they want to contribute. We have to admit that we have these kind of core members in our team sometimes. But whatever it is, you as a business owner, you need to think of the health and safety of your entire team. So all life, all life matters. I, I can't emphasize this more importantly. Um, it is a very difficult position for everyone. Um, business will slow things down and things will be different, you know, but prioritize life because let's admit, money can't buy life. And yeah. this is more towards of a business ethics lesson. Um, I know it, you know, some people, some of you may think it's cliche, but let me, let me put you into perspective. You wouldn't want any of your people that you know to be infected because of your decision, right? So rethink how you operate, how you prioritize, and whatever the prioritization, the first one must be life, okay? Don't be selfish, all right? And do not put your staff member at risk. So think safety first. Now, imagine if your business resumes normally and you lost your best performing employee due to a poor decision. Notwithstanding the guilt, but your business actually just lost a very strong pillar. That would be actually a huge blow to your business. It's not easy to find strong pillars, right? But if during this period you accidentally risk them because not thinking through, yeah, correct. And I agree. I think there's a Facebook user say that no health is no wealth. Yes, yeah. I, I fully agree with you. Yeah. At this period, you know, everyone needs to think about the health of your employees, yourself, your people, the people that you deal with. 
don't be selfish, you know, think about everyone else. So lesson number nine, life matters. I would like so, to also relate uh, just to just on that and I truly believe like this is probably one like out of the lessons so far this is probably one of the most important lessons uh, in that you have shared because like if you think about it uh, a lot of the volunteers at the moment are trying to send stuff to the hospital itself and there's a risk of contamination there's a risk of actually getting infected so correct and, yeah but all of them want like oh we want to just like go there and take photo with the doctors and like for for what we try to do is try to get that limited like the limit the amount of exposure of people going to the hospital and also you yeah. have crowd hospital so I, I cannot agree more like, yeah yeah uh, i think it is uh i think uh it is it is important uh that uh some people are also helping the frontliners but let's not forget you know uh, maybe speak to some relevant people or some parties you know consolidate your resources together so then you can limit uh, the time of contact and the risk, minimize the risk. Uh, I also read in, in, in some of the social media as well, some people just want to deliver like a McDonald's or KFCs uh, to the frontliners. I think that's good initiative. However, rethink as well, um, whether is that safe for not just yeah. for yourself, but for the person that you're delivering for as well. Uh, are they expecting it? Do they want this actually? Because you're bringing unnecessary worry to them as well. And they have families too. Yeah, uh, so and I think our Facebook friends here, all life matters. It ensures loyalty and quality in the long run. Could I agree more? Uh, that's uh, Atel de Costa again. Uh, so yes, ah. agree. Definitely. And uh, Eugene oh. Fu, uh, Eugene Fu, I'm not too sure. Are you in Johor at the moment? But Eugene Fu said couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks yeah. For watching, Thank Eugene. you. Thank you guys for, for agreeing to lesson number nine. I think that's our most important. So let us do our part so that we show other people that this is actually crucial, important as well. So now we have come up to our final lesson, lesson number 10. Okay, lesson number 10. Okay, the final lesson. Well, this sounds like, you know, the Iron Man 3 movie, The Teacher, you know, okay. where they teach you lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. <laughs> okay, uh, lesson number 10 is very simple. Uh, refocus your existing resources. Uh, when I say refocus means uh, access to your team identity mm -hmm. and then how you can relocate your resources. So fundamentally, everyone in the company is on the same boat. In yeah. order to keep the boat to stay afloat and reach to a destination, everyone has to be involved. Either you're the skipper, the paddler, the person who navigate, doesn't matter. Everyone has a role to play. So if let's say you have a sales staff initially whose role is to serve an offline customer coming, you know, hello, uncle, auntie, what can I do for you? That's those kind of sales staff. Yeah. Great. Now you can refocus them and reprioritize their tasks to help you to upload your products online. Do up the content online, take pictures and upload online. The point is sell online. They are still doing sales, but their prioritizing is now towards online. Now, say for example, if you have a customer service agent, all right, you know, those customer service, you know, who, who usually attend to your offline people come in, they have a problem, you know, right now is the good time for them to learn how to do an online customer service and to serve your future online customers. This is the time where they do the research, they come with SOPs, you know, what kind of scripts they can do. So I guess yeah. refocusing your existing resources is, everyone is still on the same boat, still on the same company, but maybe some have to pick up different roles. Maybe yeah. initially they were a navigator, now they have to become a paddler because that's where they need most. Especially some of you who are going onboarding online. Uh, there are a lot more resources that you need to invest or more people that you need to put emphasis on to get online. So this is how I think uh, everyone can realign yourself with your team members. Yeah. So uh, reassure that everyone is still doing the, the same for the company. It's just that uh, right now we are in exploration phase to try something new so that the company can keep ongoing survival. And this message I think is important because when your employees understand what you're thinking and that you're still valuing the work that they're doing, uh, then they are much more willing to do for you. I have a follow-up question to that, and that's something uh, very important because the skill set is a lot of uh, uh, it's very different in terms of uh, like people who sell online, uh, sell online, and people who actually do uh, sales agent. And I think uh, Justin actually have a comment in terms of this. Like uh, maybe some sales people don't like to get uh, mix their job and personal profile. How should they suggest to go online? I think before mm -hmm. we go that question, I, I want to yeah. talk about upskilling and uh, reskilling your your employees like uh, what right. would advice to for that <clears throat> i think uh, uh what what daniel you mentioned is that uh, what about people who doesn't have those skills right 
Yes. Um, and obviously, like I said, uh, when you look into the people, your profile of your people, you will know what they're capable of and what they may not be capable because you have worked with them together. If not, consult your HR person. Um, I think number one is look at the existing skills that they can do. All right. What can they do and what can they cannot do? If something that they cannot do, but crucially need right now, there are plenty of online courses available. If not, you can hire, you know, hire someone to do it for you or mm -hmm. hire someone to train your team to do it from you over online or whatnot. Uh, over this period, you know, I also have people who ask me for personal coaching during this period to get people to have digital skills. So this actually helps them to go online. Uh, number two, I think, uh, <clears throat> and this is probably a little bit relation to Justin, right? Yeah, Justin, Justin mentioned. Yeah, Justin mentioned that uh, sales agents don't like to be mixed up with their jobs, uh, their their personal FB profile. How we should suggest them to get online? <clears throat> I think this is just a very operational problem. Uh, as a as a as a as a company, you can always open like a Facebook page, whatever accounts that you can give private access, authorized access to these yeah. people, and they're able to explore. Um, look, uh, I think everyone is also still new. Nobody was prepared for a pandemic, all right. Yeah. Nobody was prepared to need to actually change their skills. But you know, digital skills and this kind of online skills that we're talking about, upskill, reskill, something that we've been talking for the past ten years, mm -hmm. right? So there, there isn't a better time to do it than now because right now you have plenty of time at home. Does that answer your question, Daniel and Justin? Yeah, it does actually. Uh, someone actually commented uh, post lockdown. Hmm. Post lockdown, like to. Uh, I do not know who is this, uh, but hi. So, yeah, hi. Uh, we can, yeah, if you want to reach out to us, uh, yeah, feel free to just uh, DM us. Actually, it doesn't have to be. Uh, post lockdown and yeah. so forth. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. we can do this online. Uh, yeah, we can do this online. <laughs> uh, Shannon, uh, Shannon actually, Shannon Chow, uh, uh, also agree. Not everyone is uh, fit to uh, uh, to do content population online. Uh, for example, sales manager might not want to do such tasks. So yes, a lot of people need to upskill for now. Yeah, agree. The, uh, there is a lot of things uh, in demand. I think uh, Ben Ho, I'm not too sure if you know who Ben Ho is. Uh, oh, from, Talent Bank, yes. Yeah, from Talent Bank. And uh, we are trying to help some of the fresh grads on that, on top of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think relating to Sales One says that, for example, a sales manager may not want to do such tasks. Um, just highlighting this point, yeah. Uh, may not want to do such tasks comes from two mindsets. Number one is the mindset whereby I do not want to do it because I don't know how to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they don't know how to do it, let's train them and let's get them going. Okay. Yeah. Meaning that you're willing to learn. But I may not want to do it because I don't want to do it. Now, that's a mentality that you have to deal with uh, because uh, ultimately, industry will change. Nothing, nothing of the same industry will stay the same all the time. Yeah. Uh, get your team to be prepared to be flexible, be adaptable, explain to them why there is need to be a change. Nobody loves changes, <laughs> right? But let's admit it that sometimes change is a necessity. So if your sales manager is convinced, you know, they know that this will actually increase their sales and actually lessen up their workload as well also because, you know, we understand that online actually can help to uh, lessen a lot of workloads as well. Um, so then this is something that you may want to explore. Yeah, most important is identify that the team is willing to be agile and adaptable. These are the diamonds you really want to keep. And during this period, many people have been telling me, you know, Sam, uh, during this time, uh, my this staff left. During this time, uh, my staff don't want to work. During this time, uh, my staff uh, is the one who, you know, gave me so many advices. You know, I, I'm so thankful for this stuff. You know, we have so many different categories of teams. And during this period, it's the best time to see the true colors of the team. I, I, I think uh, one, one of the discussion we had is like, uh, during this time, we see the worst in humanity. But hmm. we see a lot more of the best of, in humanity. So, yeah, yeah. Very Focus also, on the positivity. Uh, this is just something uh, the entrepreneur group has actually. So uh, we have a six months uh, like shop line uh, platform deal for you guys. So if you guys want, uh, if you guys are not online, uh, there's an e-commerce platform for you for free for six months. Uh, but, ah. So that throughout the whole MCO, you can try to monetize and to do. Uh, if you have any question for Sam. Uh, where can people reach out to you or what? Ca how can they ask you or yeah right so most people actually reach me out on uh, Facebook because I think that's the easiest for them to search if not LinkedIn 
uh, mm. I think these are the most uh, easiest and most important ways to reach me so that I can I can actually reply you. Uh, however, I know that there are a lot of clients who call me during this period to solve their problems and uh, I hope today what I share these 10 lessons to you will be uh, helpful for you and ultimately, you know, I help corporate to solve their problem as well. Um, during this period as well, uh, uh, MDEC has also, uh, you know, uh, requested a lot of parties to do the tech relief. Uh, so beyond Infinity Consultancy is also part of that. You may search on our list. Um, we right now provide a two-hour consultancy for businesses, uh, whether they have an online presence or without an online presence. Uh, feel free to explore that one as well. So we hope yep. that this could help uh, businesses like yourself um, to identify the key areas of growth. Yeah. Yeah, that that is something much needed, and really appreciate your your time for that. Uh, we, so any other question from the group? If not, we will let uh, Sam off. We are actually at an hour, surprisingly. Wow, we are right on time. Daniel, high five. Uh, Hypothetical high five. <laughs> this side, yeah. but, oh, this uh, side. I think I have one more question. Uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, someone say thank you. We'll definitely connect on Facebook. Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm on always on the entrepreneur group. Uh, Sam is also there. Uh, so feel free to look for us over there. So uh, we'll, I'll tag him over on the stream. So thank you very much. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, sorry. Susan actually said, I create a new Facebook account under public, no limit 5,000 account, uh, just to promote work. That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That. That's uh, actually a very simple, simple uh, method to do, actually. Yes. Yeah. That's that will be in reply to, yeah, that, that's always, uh, there's always solution. As So long you're willing to ask and you're willing to adapt, solutions will come up. Yeah. Be open minded. So uh, I'd like to thank all our people who have been watching us live and especially those who are watching us later. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry for a bit of a technical issue early on, but it's okay. I uh, hope everything went it's well. It's all good. It's all good. And so uh, thank you. More importantly, thank you, Sam. Uh, everyone, Thanks, Daniel. Yeah. Everyone stay safe, stay at home, uh, stay hydrated. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're probably going to have another few chill out session soon. So, uh, 3 p.m. we will have Malaka Boy. Uh, Malaka Boy runs an uh, uh, entertainment company. He Influencer marketing, is it? Influencer marketing and a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, yeah. he's the guy behind uh, Elizabeth Tan, uh, a whole bunch of uh, famous uh, Malaysia influencers. So stay tuned for that uh, tree. So see you guys. Bye. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Bye-bye. Stay safe.